In this video we will show how to provide histological annotations to multi-imaging datasets in SkillsLab with the open source software QPath. We will start with a short introduction into mass spectrometry imaging, have a look at the dataset and show why it's oftentimes necessary to add histological information. Then we introduce QPath and the SkillsLab plugin for QPath. We then show how to use QPath to transfer annotations to SkillsLab. And finally we will show how QPath helps with the annotation of tissue microarray data. First to mass spectrometry imaging and histology. Let us start with the first imaging mass spectrometry dataset. We can see the features in the molecular images. We can perform a spatial segmentation and we can see that these spatial segments um, seem to match the anatomy of the sample. In this first example, some of the structures can be deduced from the anatomy, but even if the anatomy of the sample is known, at some point it is necessary to correlate the MOLDI data to histological data. Commonly, the complete workflow for a mass spectrometry imaging experiment is as follows. It starts with an unstained sample. After sample preparation, the sample is measured in a mass spectrometer, and this results in an imaging data set. Now the same sample is taken out and stained for microscopy. Then the sample is stained in a microscopic slide scanner and we obtain a digital slide. Based on the histology, um, now annotations can be made and these annotations typically include metadata such as the tissue type. The annotated microscopic image can then be co-registered to the imaging data set um, and we get an annotated data set and with this annotated data set uh, we can do all kinds of supervised and unsupervised analysis. Now to QPath and the QPath plugin. QPath is a free and open source software for the analysis of digital slides and it was introduced in the seminal paper shown here. It allows to provide regional annotations with names and class labels. It can automatically detect and label tissue microarray cores. Although not shown in this video, it contains many other great tools for things such as automatic cell detection, antigen declassifications and others. QPath is extensible with a plugin mechanism which is used to export the data to SkillsLab. It is also widely used with a rapidly growing number of citations in scientific publications. Let's have a look on how to do the annotation in QPath. The software loads the digital slide. We can zoom into the digital slide um, to see actually the microscopic structures. Uh, we can pan around um, to actually locate the area that we are interested in. Now QPath offers different tools to do annotations. First let's see here this uh, structure, obviously bone is probably a rib in this data set. Um, the first tool that can be used to provide annotations is the polygon tool, where we simply define the corners of the enclosing polygon. And that might be very widely used. A second tool yeah, that we can use is the brush tool. The brush, as you can see, covers a little area and allows us to paint an area just as we would with a regular brush. The third tool, and probably the most powerful one, is the magic wand. Uh, that allows to automatically annotate areas that have a similar texture. Um, if we look in this atrium, of this heart, uh, we see that um, all the hollow areas are filled with a blood clot. Um, and in between we have these muscular tissue. Uh, now, oftentimes one might be um, asked to annotate the muscular area. And you can imagine with a um, brush tool or a polygon, uh, that is a very tedious and detailed um, task. Now with the magic wand found here, um, we can just follow the muscular area and it will automatically annotate only the muscle and finds this with the uh, texture. So we can just follow like this and get a very detailed annotation of these 
muscle structure. Let's follow here a bit. And you see how easy it is to get even the most complicated areas annotated. If at some point it automatically adds a little bit too much to the area, maybe we can force this just right here. We can simply hit the Alt key and remove the excess annotation. So And we are done. You see how fast it is um, to do even very detailed annotations um, this way. I'm now done doing all the annotations. Um, and now we can change the annotations, like we can um, set the names of the annotations. Um, so everyone, everything here can get a name in many cases it may not be necessary to use region names because semantically more often than not it's easier to work with uh, class labels that in skills lab become region attributes so Let's highlight a region and we can set um, the class labels for those regions. Once we are finished with the annotation, uh, we go to extensions and export the annotations to Skills Lab. Um, here we can see um, how this export will be done. Um, we have the class labels that they are assigned. We can select which um, attribute uh, this will become in Skills Lab. So let's just call it tissue type. Um, we could actually add more than one attribute and then sort these um, back and forth. But uh, let's not do this now. And uh, we can also say we want to create attributes with the region name, um, but that's uh, not necessary for here. So we export um, to a file called export Ceph. Back in Skills Lab, we can now import uh, the annotation that we just exported from QPath. Um, Selecting the file, I'm getting all the annotations pre-selected and I want to import them as a new region. Um, and now we have our annotations available um, inside Skills Lab, and we also have the tissue type um, that used to be the class label previously annotated. In the attribute table, we can select uh, that we want to use the tissue type as a region. Um, and that allows us to highlight the areas based on this annotation. Um, and that can, for instance, be used um, to highlight the scores and loading plots and color these according to the annotation that we just made. And lastly, let's have a look at how QPath can help with the annotation of tissue microarray data. Here we see a tissue microarray. 
tissue microarray contains cores punched from many different samples and allows to measure and analyze a large number of samples at once. This is why it's very often used in pathology research and in mass spectrometry imaging as well. Um, since all these cores come from different samples, um, it's important to correlate the cores with the information that we have on the sample. Uh, typically, there exists a lot of meta information on each of these individual samples. And this is typically um, stored in a table. Here we see an example of such a table uh, with random mock data. Um, we have a column that denotes the position of the sample on this TMA grid. We have an identifier that identifies the sample and then oftentimes in clinical research um, there's all sorts of additional information that may be necessary to later analyze the data such as the age, the gender and of course um, the disease um, and then additional information on the disease in the case of tumors often uh, things like stage, a nodal status or whether there was a metastasis or not. And these columns can be a lot, many more, like which medication someone received, um, whether someone was a smoker or whatever information is available is typically uh, found in such a table. And that needs to be correlated with the imaging data. To deal with such tissue microarrays, um, um, QPAD has a nice tool that's called the TMA D array, and it can be found in this uh, TMA menu, TMA D array. Um, and now we have to specify how many columns and rows are in this tissue microarray. Um, in this case, it's 12 columns and 9 rows. Um, then we run this detection. Um, it will take a little time um, and then we get automatically uh, the cores detected. So after we detected the TMA cores, we can also have a look at the uh, grid labels and see that every core has a label according to its position um, in this TMA. We can now export the TMA annotations. Uh, if we go to our export skills lab command, um, we'll see that now there are some additional uh, checkboxes because we have TMA annotations. Um, and what I want to do here is add the TMA core attribute to the annotations. Uh, and then again, I'm going to export the data. Now in skills lab, I can import the Ceph file that we just created in QPAD. Um, I have all my annotations selected. We just go through the wizard. I want to create a new name for the region that contains the annotations. And now we're importing the information. We now have all the annotations available. Um, so we can see, going back to the annotation, that every of the imported regions uh, now has the class label and the TMA core available. So um, going into the attribute editor, yeah, it would be really easy to add new column and add information that is linked to the TMA core. And this concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.